When We Were Young, 2024, all album plays. 57 records being played from front to back by the bands that we grew up with. We're going to be hearing these records, but if we haven't heard them, we got to hear them beforehand. We have to be prepped and ready to make informative decisions. The Emo Social Club is listening to all 57 of these records, and on this episode, we are reviewing Hey Monday's Hold On Tight. Lizzie, before we get into our opinions on this record, tell us a little bit more about Hey Monday, maybe a little bit about Cassidy Pope, friend of the pod, and maybe a little bit more about Hold On Tight, their one record. Their one singular record. <laughs> Hold On Tight came out October 7, 2008 on Decadence Records, which is a subsidy of Columbia Records because somebody said, Pete Wentz, here's a whole record label. Have fun with it. This was produced by... Sam and Sluggo. They did produce a lot of uh, scene bands during this time. So yes. Cobra Starship, We the Kings, Coheed and Cambria, Gym Class Heroes. The singles off of the, this album was Homecoming and How You Love Me Now. They supported Fall Out Boy on the Believers Never Die Part Do tour. This album was on the top Heat Seeker chart at 11. By 2009, the album had sold 64,000 copies which is also very impressive. Cleveland.com, like Cleveland, Ohio, ranked Homecoming as the 96 out of 100 pop punk song. What? I don't know. If you live in Cleveland, Ohio, I need you to message us and let me know who's running this website. Because I looked it up. They're from Florida. Yeah. They're not from Cleveland. <laughs> Before we get into our opinions on Hey Monday's Hold On Tight, make sure that you are subscribed and you are liking and you are commenting on this video and all of our other videos. There is a playlist down in the description with all of the records we've done so far from When We Were Young Fest and all the records we're going to be doing for When We Were Young Fest. If you're subscribed, you'll know when a new uh, album hits that playlist. So make sure you hit that button now don't forget, because we're about to get into some takes and you're about to be either angry commenting or passionately uh, favorable commenting. So my thoughts on Hold On Tight by Hey Monday are that when this came out, this was during the time that I was discovering Paramore and more of that pop punk scene because it came out in 2008 and I was in eighth grade. So that was like this big revolutionary moment for me. And I remember listening to all of these like hopeless records fueled by ramen and decadence bands. And of course, everybody groups in Hey Monday with being some people have said diet paramour. I think mm. I can understand where that sentiment comes from, because during that time, people have been like, I want one of those. And everybody said, let me get one of those paramours. And it's like, no, like these bands are individuals and not paramour part two. The comparisons between paramour during this time and Hey Monday are just not equatable. This album specifically is a lot more that traditional pop punk bouncy summer vibes something that we would really kind of relate more to like newfound glory-esque rather than you listen to riot by paramore or all we know is falling that stuff is almost a little bit more steeped in some like og emo influences this is yeah. like the more modern pop punk you're straight to it and you're like dancing around and you're like starting a pit, nothing more, nothing <laughs> less. This makes it such a quintessential pop punk album to go back to. And I think listening to it now after so many years, because sometimes I forget that Hey Monday has been around or like this album exists outside of Homecoming and How You Love Me Now. And re-listening to this at like 29, that's, it's just is still this really fun, deeply ingrained nostalgia but it hasn't really aged poorly. This really holds on tight to what its original theming was. Took me off guard there. Yeah. My top three tracks from Hold On Tight by Hey Monday are Set Off. It's a great opener. If you have a really good opening song, it's probably going to be a ripper of an album. And if you don't, I don't know what's up in the air. This is a little bit more intricate than like some of the singles I feel. It shows a little bit more dynamicness and like their musicianship. So I think that that was really interesting to put that. And then you have your front load of singles yep. that are more mainstream radio at that time. But I think this, if they ended up doing a little bit more through this, ideally I would have hoped that they had stayed together and progressed <laughs> more than just this one album. Run, Don't Walk. I love a little synth in the beginning. I was going to say, this is the neon pop punk song for you. 
Yeah, this is the neon bubblegum poppy punk. And I was all in for it. You also have like this like kind of contrast with a little bit heavier instruments in the back too. So it's like that perfect like, yeah, I'm dancing, but I'm still like, a hardcore kid. Then the other one is Hurricane Streets, which mm. is which is every song that pop punk bands usually have about hating their town or mm -hmm. needing to leave their town that they grew up in. But it's not this like aggressive, I hate my town, I have to leave, this sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's like, hey, I know, you know, things are like this, but I need to get out and do more and explore my life. But I think that that's like a really good homage now that at least some of us who are older, we can look back and say, yeah, I didn't really hate my town. I just wanted to get out and explore the world. My least faves from Hey Mondays, Hold On Tight are Arizona. This is just way too repetitive. I, it, this was just kind of silly at, after a certain point. The, like the course, like everything leading up to the course before you get into Arizona, Arizona, it's fine. And then they just keep doing it. And I'm like, girl, please. Mm. The other one is obvious. I didn't like super outwardly hate it, but it gave me this trying to be Avril Lavigne almost type of vibe. Potentially, I could have seen that if like the label said, hey, we want to try to pitch this one to mainstream like pop rock radio. I could see that would have made a, a good choice if they decided to do that. Here are my thoughts on Hey Mondays, Hold On Tight. I really only started to listen to like the singles from this in the last few years because of doing emo nights and stuff and like, I, th I think it's mainly because there's a lot of uh, conversations about how there aren't a lot of women in the in the emo pop punk scene. And so you kind of got to hold on to the ones you got, push them up, on, uh, hold them up on a pedestal and be like, we only have a couple. So like, let's look at all the ones we have going back and revisiting those songs since way in the past of like 2008 Warped Tours and shit. Like now I'm like, OK, I actually really like these songs. Uh, the two singles um, really liked them. I was glad to re to revisit this record, I guess, because it's never something I listened to at the time. It's like, no, I got the singles and we're good. Not that I ever thought this band was very like Paramore esque. I always thought they were different. But I thought they were in the same scene, and it's like they are a woman. So I was like, this is, this is different. This is very different than what Paramore does. But Paramore being one of my like favorite bands, I was always like, yeah, you're making these comparisons, and you know, we got to move away from that because Paramore is this. This is not Paramore. Yeah, no. I also knew of them just through AP Magazine and Glamour Kills because that's literally, this was the most like late 2000s AP Magazine Glamour Kills was like a entire personality trait. We saw it with the main, we saw it with, with Hey Mondays. It's like, there's just Glamour Kills bands that are just like, yep, that's you. Like that is you. Damn, I miss the Glamour Kills tour. Seriously. I did like this record quite a bit. Um, I think that it's, really turn your brain off pop. It's really turn your brain off. Like just, just catchy songs and just sing along and nod your head, tap your foot, whatever it is. I listened to this in the car on a sunny day, windows down. It felt good. Felt real good. I will just say that Cassidy has a great voice and we've heard Cassidy sing obviously mm -hmm. in the years since this, there is some of it where I'm like, she sounds young. She sounds like a child. Like it's, it's, you know, the first record they did and, and her, her voice just may not have been as mature in the recording of this. I know Cassidy is a good singer. So I've also was excited like, Oh, they're going to be playing this. So it's like, yeah, that's a good opportunity to like hear these songs too, with like her voice, like having matured and like her becoming a really good, powerful singer in that time in front of the pub. There's a lot to like in her vocals on this record too. Mm -hmm. No, no shade to anything. Uh, that's my only critique at all. I'm like, I got to I can't just glaze it up and not have a critique. <laughs> glaze it up. Yeah. My top tracks from hold on tight by Hey Monday. It's three songs from the near the end of the record. Really? Uh, yeah. It's just three songs. Like I, I, there was a lot that I liked. I think these are just my, like the ones that when I listened to it the first time through, I was like, let me go back to those and like check. And like these, these felt really good to me. Hurricane streets, same on that. This felt like one of the more like edgy rockers from them. So there's there's a lot on here that's very bubblegum. There's a lot on, on here that's just very pop music. So I wasn't expecting to hear a lot of like rippers, a lot of like crazy guitar work, the, the pop punk stuff, the chords and all that. And maybe not like a riff or two. This is one I was like, oh, there's riffage. There's like good stuff on here. I felt good about this one. I like this one. Revisited a couple times. Enjoyed it. Uh, I did like Arizona. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Thought it was great. Yikes. I enjoyed I enjoyed the chorus. I enjoyed the repetitiveness of it. 
Um, I don't know what it is. It's just like the melody of it and the, the vocals in it just really caught my ear and I listened to it a couple times and I was like, yeah, I like this one. This is a fun, like super catchy song, super poppy song. Um, again, turn your brain off. If you're listening to this, don't, don't think too much on this. This is not a, a thinker record. This is a listening, enjoying, and just like roll the windows down, have a good time record. Summer vibes record. You yeah. Mean? I would, I would probably not have liked this if we listened to this during the winter months. Should have tried harder uh, right after that. It's like really just the three songs in a row. I just felt like it was a really strong part of the record. Um, it's another bit of a ripper. It's got a little rippitude to it. I like the verses uh, because it was a little bit more of like Cassidy being able to sing over like more choppy guitars. So there was like a little bit more prominence of her voice. So I liked that for, for that song. This one is a little bit more Paramore sounding. <laughs> I was like, this one does kind of sound more like Paramore and I'm a huge fan of Paramore and I don't compare the two bands at all. Uh, but this one did have that sort of sound that I really like from Paramore. And I was like, oh, this is really nostalgic. This is that mid 2000s, late 2000s, like sound that I was like, yeah, that's, I really like this one. I like the lyrics, like the whole thing. My least favorite songs from Hey Mondays, Hold On Tight. There was nothing that really stuck out as like, this is a bad song. Uh, usually when I'm like thinking of it, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> Let me take a second. Let me listen to that again. What the fuck? There was nothing like that on here. This is, like I said, turn your brain off. Don't think too hard about this. It's all good. It's all fun. Uh, Bubblegum pop is good sometimes. Oh, you yeah. can enjoy it. Don't don't think too hard about it. I think the record is just a sign of the times from 2008. It's just a very, like, of the times, pop punk, alt press, warp tour, like, some of these bands had just gotten really big on mainstream media on MTV and stuff. And so a lot of newer bands were coming out after this and they were trying to find bands that fit into this vibe and made their own vibe. Uh, I do think Hey Monday stands out among all of that. There's a lot of like predictable formulas, but I'm not like upset at any of it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think that it's a bad thing that this is just a very like straightforward pop record. Uh, the only thing I'll say is that Candles as a ballad is maybe a little boring. It's like not the most exciting song on the record. Um, it's not bad by any means. There's there's you know got to be a ballad on there. But of the like two slower songs in this record, I do think Six Months at the End is a much better acoustic slower track versus Candles as a ballad. Um, but I don't yeah I, I if I heard that song come on, I'd still listen to it, still enjoy it. Um, I hope that my Spotify has learned that I would enjoy to hear this on shuffle every so often. It's like, oh shit, here we go. It's back. Arizona. Oh, go no. fuck yourself, dude. Mm -mm. <laughs> that was our thoughts. We are not the only ones with thoughts. Our brains have turned on as of many people's on the internets. And we went to the internets to find uh, reviews from Amazon and to find reviews from critics writing for publications. Probably AP Magazine. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, this is the most AP Magazine band of all time. So I found a couple of reviews from Amazon about this band, and I'm going to tell you what people on the internet thought. This review is from Be Best. Better to buy songs on Amazon versus iTunes. It's a five-star review right. from 2013. I love this song, and Amazon makes it totally worth it because unlike stupid iTunes, you can keep downloading it to a new phone or re-download it if your internet dies or something in the middle of the download, all for free. See iTunes, if you lose internet connection in the middle of the download or your power goes out or you get a new computer, you have to buy the song all over again. Trust me, I experienced that huge problem with iTunes more than once. Whereas Amazon is awesome because it's all in your account. So you just log in and it's there and it shows that you paid the $1 for it. So it's yours. Even if you get a new phone or iPod or lose internet connection during your download or the power goes out or whatever, you're logged it. It's your account. You paid for it. It's all legal and it's yours for like ever smiley face. And like I said above, if you lose internet connection or the power goes out during your download, you can retry the download on like iTunes in my own personal opinion, I highly, highly, highly recommend you download songs and buy songs from amazon.com versus buying it on iTunes. I don't know how this relates directly to, hey, Monday's hold on tight. I also need to do tech support for somebody. That is not true. Everything she wrote in here is objectively not true. You can re-download it from about iTunes. To say, no, you, you just can. don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it was like a step-by-step -step process. It was annoying, but you could do. I was like thinking, I was like, no, you could have done yes. that. It was just really tedious. In the time it took you to write the same thing over and over again on an Amazon review of one Hey Monday song, apparently, you could have just learned how iTunes operates the exact same as how Amazon operates. I am 
so lost in why this all happened, but I had to read it because, hey, uh, maybe I've taught someone out there something, something new. This next review is from HF. Not a bad album, but a bit generic. Three stars from 2009. Just as an FYI, I'm sure I'm not the target audience being in my late 20s, so maybe it's my fault for really not loving it. I don't recall where I first heard Hey Monday, but I thought it was worth checking out after hearing How You Love Me Now. I'm not extremely picky when it comes to fun power pop when I'm in the mood for it, but honestly, besides that one track, Homecoming and Candles, the rest of the album struck me as generic, a bit kitty, and did not hold my attention. I could not differentiate between the remaining tracks for the most part. I think the singer's vocals are great. Nothing is noticeably wrong. The arrangements are just more typical than I was hoping for. I don't think this will be a band where I can hear a new song and know that it's them without question. Maybe they just need time to develop. Like most, I saw the comparison to Paramore without anyone else mentioning it. The style, genre, age, and the fact that there is only one girl. But I find Paramore's albums from start to finish amazing. They have a mix of fun pop with a dash of haunting and depth. I think Hey Monday would probably be great for someone younger who just loves to sing along and isn't looking for anything too particular. I do feel like that is maybe how I felt in 2008, 2009 as I'm like graduating college and like a lot of the bands around that era, the main, you know, the, these bands that are doing this more like power pop, power punk, pop, punk, power pop, pop punk are more just like for a younger audience that still is in high school. When I had, you know, my, my chems, my fallout boys, uh, my, the used. And when I was in high school, there's gotta be some of those bands for thems. Yeah. That was for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So here are some critic reviews for Hey Monday's Hold On Tight. This first review is from All Music by Andrew Leahy. 7.3 out of 10 stars. Given their emo pop influences and powerhouse female vocals, it's hard not to draw parallels between Hey Monday and Paramore. It's going to be every review. Cassidy Pope serves as the band's centerpiece howling lovelorn lyrics with all the marketable grit of Haley Williams while her bandmates pummel through power chords and group sing-alongs. Paramore's platinum-selling Riot incorporated elements of hard rock, though, while Hey Monday go for a sweeter approach with their own album, which takes its sustenance from bubblegum pop melodies and well-scrubbed guitar riffs. Hold On Tight also benefits from the presence of Sam and Sluggo. There's certainly some filler here, particularly towards the album's conclusion, but Hold On Tight is still stacked with enough TGIF nuggets to make it an engaging debut. I do think it's like, oh, Paramore does this and Hey Monday does this. It's like, cool. Well, I don't know. Coheed and Cambria does this. <laughs> like, is that relevant? I don't know. How is it relevant that there's one other female fronted band and that's the one you're talking about and how they wrote music? It just, it just always struck me as weird when it's like, if the music is different enough, why don't you just compare Hey Monday to a band that they actually sound like? Because they don't actually sound like Paramore that much, being no. that Paramore did have more like hard rock. I would say even like emo influences versus pop punk influences. Mm -hmm. Like the very, the very dividing line there where it's like Paramore sounded more like Taking Back Sunday and this sounded more like Newfound Glory. Like, so it's like, okay, they're taking like what Cartel is doing or what this other band is doing. Like, let's talk about how they compare to those bands versus Paramore. Cause that well, seems like a way more apt uh, comparison. Oh no, it definitely does. And I mean, I think the issue with a lot of people here is that during that time, it's like, Oh, I want to hear a compare similar voices that I hear in the scene, which primarily were male. So you have two female voices as the primary only voices in that scene for the most part that are really like on a platform. And they're basically going to say, Hey, I can literally only compare these two because this is the same vocal range and they're both women. It's like, no, you can have other similarities and musical styles and even vocal range and like just your vocal anything and compare it to somebody who has a more masculine voice or even a band that is just primarily filled with more masculine people as well. It's not outrageous to do so. But during that time, it was very... Early 2000s was a sign of the times. Sure was. Okay, so a lot of things were very gendered. Those are our thoughts on this record. Those were the critics. Those were the Amazon critics' thoughts on this record. But now we have one final question to answer. Should you see Hey Mondays, Hold On Tight, at When We Were Young 2024? Yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> End of episode. Absolutely. I've never seen them live, so I'm really excited to finally see them live. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna say yes, too. Being that we interviewed Cassidy last year at When We Were Young Fest, just kind of on a whim. She just 
Her team just reached out and said, Hey, do you want to talk to Cassidy? We were like, absolutely we do. She was super sweet. And at the time had no idea that there was going to be a Hey Monday reunion for this year. So it looks like this is going to be the only place that Hey Monday is going to be playing in this calendar year. They're doing some stuff in 2025, maybe. So I think it's like, yeah, worth it to see them at, at this one festival show. I think that even if I had to run from the beginning of their set to somewhere else, I would do it because the start of the record has the singles and it's got some good bangers off the top. So i um, definitely going to put this on my on my list of bands that I'm going to see at the festival. And for was, sure. And it was also said that, so Cassidy Pope has also put out uh, new singles yes. and is coming out with a new album as well. So it's been said that she may also play a couple songs too yeah. there. So we'll be there. We'll be seeing uh, Hey Monday and, and Cassidy Pope at one of your young fest. Where will you be? Did you agree with our takes on this record? Were we right? Were we wrong? Let us know. Get into the comments. Get in that like button. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to see more of these videos. We got that whole playlist down there. So you can watch all of our reviews of all of the records. Let us know what you think about all of them. But until the festival, until Hey Monday, until Hold On Tight, we'll see you there. <laughs>